Things I learned in my 40s, a part 10. Dating over 40 is hard as hell. We know too much about ourselves and what we think we want. But sometimes what we think we want is not really what we want. It's just what feels comfortable. And this is why we keep finding that we keep attracting the same type of people and in the same types of relationships that have the same unhappy ending. And I've found that in order to break the cycle, you have to do the work and heal from within. And that is a lifelong journey. Okay, so I don't know who agrees with this or not, but like, I'm 41 years old and it's two words that I just really cannot stand. And one of them is boyfriend and the other one is spend a night. I don't wanna do either. I don't want a boyfriend at 41. And I definitely don't wanna spend no night. I don't spend a night. Get your spend a night bag. What's a spend a night bag? I ain't spend no, no night at nobody house since elementary school, okay? So we're not doing that. We're not doing that here. You moving in? Are we getting married? Which one? If you're looking for that special someone and you look my way and you say, she could be my special someone, I might be. But if I even get a small whiff of any misogynistic, patriarchy, mansplaining, not living in reality, it's going to be a hard no. If you haven't dove down and dealt with the trauma and are living your most authentic self as best you can, you can't be with a person that's woke if you're not woke. The end. And this is exactly why nobody wants to date single women over the age of 40. I mean, talk about the 30s, but man, especially 40s, because this is what you're going to get, guys, right? This is exactly what you're going to get. So let's go ahead and unbox these short little rants that I shared with you in tonight's coaching video. So the first woman's rant, I, I, I had to replay it a couple of times to figure out what she was talking about because she was going through one big circle jerk about how, oh, you know, sometimes when you're with somebody that you don't know is going to be somebody who you should be with. And if you're just staying with that person because you're comfortable, <sighs> This chick has been to one too many therapy sessions because I could tell she's just going through this mental circle jerk in her head constantly about guys that she might want to date, guys that she might not want to date, or guys that she might be attracted to, guys she might not be attracted to, and then it just becomes this big fuss. Imagine, you know, actually like dating this chick seriously. You'll never be able to make a decision on anything because everything will be like doing trigonometry or calculus, right? It's like, no, let's just go here, have dinner, go to the movie, and then come back home. Is that okay? Well, depends where the movie is. Depends what time it's playing. It depends what we're going to eat, um, you know, are they going to have vegan food there? Is it going, you know, I mean, it's just going to, it's just not pleasant to date these chicks who've been on this planet for decades and are still flying solo. Okay. And, you know, it's, these are the same type of, type of chicks that will like take vacations by themselves. They go to dinner by themselves and they will go to like movies by themselves. You ever see these chicks like sitting alone and they're just sitting there eating their popcorn and everybody else is out there with a friend or a date and they're just sitting there by themselves. And this is kind of a common theme, right? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing that. Like you go to the movie every once in a while by yourself because you just feel like it. But uh, this is generally a common theme in uh, their lives where they're you know you'll see them at dinner by themselves sometimes i see these chicks just sitting alone taking up a two-person table just sitting alone eating when everybody else is just out 
like with socializing, right? With fr- with friends or family or, you know, their their husband, their wives, their girlfriends, their partners. Um, but yeah, once these chicks turn forty, man, it's it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. Uh, so let's break into the second girl's TikTok. That was the girl who had the pink hair, and this chick was talking about how she just turned forty-one years old. She just turned 41 years old, and she's still out there, man. She's still out there advertising herself because she doesn't have a man. She ain't married, doesn't have a family, doesn't have kids. So she's out there, and she's talking about how I don't want to spend a night. At first, I thought she was saying spin a night. Didn't it sound like she was saying spin a night? I was like, is that a term, spin a night, like just... Kind of like for guys spinning plates. Is that is that what they call it? Spin a night. Um, I'm going to turn this on. Yes, that's cash. Back. Look at Cash and Gizmo back there. We're about to jam in a sec and uh, get some food. But I'm going to turn this on because it's a little warm out here. But yeah, she was talking about <laughs> spend a night. That's what she was saying. Spend a night. She goes, I'm not, I'm not in grammar school anymore. I'm not going to spend a night. Instead, are we getting married? Are you moving in? And it's like, you're 41 years old. Why are you Why are you talking about this now? Why weren't you talking about this when you were 21? Okay, when, uh, when you were 20 years younger, before you got this pink hair and probably brainwashed with all this feminism, when you were still more feminine yourself. Why weren't you having these dis- discussions then with guys that you were dating? What's the problem? Why are you having these discussions suddenly at 41? Oh, oh, I see. It's because you're tired of getting run amok by the Chads, the Pookies, and the Tyrones of the world, right? So now you're looking for the beta provisioner because you can't get the Chad anymore. And you're starting to fall behind on some bills. You realize rent's going up, real estate's going up. You can't do it by yourself. So now you need a man. Well, you need a provisioner, beta provisioner. So that's uh, that's something you'll see very often, guys, with these girls. Uh, once they hit their middle ages is uh, they will start looking for that uh, provisioner and start having those discussions about how you know what I don't want to spend a night spend a night spend the night uh, I want to get married when are you gonna put a ring on this finger when are you gonna put a ring on that finger it's like girl you should have had a ring on that finger 20 years ago and your kids right now should be a, should be teenagers at least they should be in high school and you should be going to PTA meetings with your husband but nope you're still out there you're still out there on that magic carousel and uh, now you suddenly want to get off because you know because it'll benefit you not because it benefits a guy but because it'll benefit you so the third chick right who is clearly in her 40s she was talking about and this is a woman by the way who obviously at her age, has very slim options, right? She doesn't have a whole lot of choice in men. And these these chicks will admit to that, right? They're on the dating apps. They're, they're complaining about how they can't even get guys, you know, their own age. You know, they're getting messages from grandpas and low-value guys. They can't even get a decent guy anymore at uh, over the age of 40. So this woman, who is over the age of 40, is talking about... If I sense even a smidgen of patriarchy, mansplaining. So already you know this chick's been brainwashed. She's been brainwashed by feminism. Was she like this 20 years years ago? No. I don't think she was that bad. Maybe she was on the path to becoming that, right? And this explains why she's still flying solo. Four decades into her life, she's still out there flying solo, now on the clearance rack. Uh, but yet, here she is, acting as if she is the buyer. It's like, no, you're the you're the seller. You're now, you know, you're no. It, it's no longer a buyer's market for you, right? You're deep into this game, and um, most men don't even want to date you. But here you come with this attitude, talking about any slight hint of mansplaining, patriarchy, or toxic masculinity. I mean. Who decides that, right? You? Are you deciding that? So basically, and and the thing you you guys have to understand about chicks who say things like that, right? 
where they're like, if I sense any hint of patriarchy or mansplaining, um, especially with the mansplaining, the reason why they don't want you mansplaining to them is basically because they don't want to be told they're wrong. So that's essentially what I've seen when these girls like, he's mansplaining. Every instance that I've seen of a guy doing that, um, I don't like to use that term, but every instance where that situation has happened, uh, it was merely the guy pointing out facts, data, or telling her why she was wrong, telling or trying to have a reasonable argument with her. And the woman, because she can't argue on facts, right? They they you generally use these anecdotal, um, like anecdotal uh, evidence versus actual statistical evidence. Uh, because they can't, can't argue on facts, they just revert to shaming language where they go, oh, you're mansplaining, you're mansplaining. So this is a chick who's in her 40s who just doesn't want to be told when she's wrong. She wants you to act like a little beta bitch, her beta bitch, uh, while she just abuses you. And then she had the nerve to be like, you know, if you haven't grown past that, if you haven't matured, and you're not living in reality, you're not woke enough to be with this woke girl. And it's like, are you insane? Ask any normal, sane person out there um, what they think about somebody who's woke. They'll be like, oh, delusional, not living in reality, lives in their head, constant state of anger, constant state of looking to be triggered about anything, constantly playing the victim. All right, so that's essentially what she's saying. I'm not surprised she's single, uh, and she's probably gonna stay single. Uh, for the rest of her days. I don't even know why these chicks bother. And this is going to sound mean. I don't even know why these chicks bother to date. Don't. You're never going to find a man, you know, or at least just admit you're just trying to sleep around. You're just going to, you know, bang guys. But of course, women need that plausible deniability because they need to constantly lie to themselves about what they're actually doing so they don't feel guilty or feel like for a slut for what they're actually doing. Okay, but... Like I said, I don't even know why these girls bother. Why? Just just give up, right? Because you're you're not gonna find a guy who's gonna who's gonna fulfill what you're looking for. Who's gonna be, you know, this, you know, especially in her case, this little beta bitch that you are actually gonna have attraction for and that you're gonna respect. Because just basic female, you know, just hardwiring, right? I know that as a professional dating coach, but it's basic uh, female hardwiring, they can never respect a uh, guy like that. And if she can't respect him, she can't feel attraction for him. Girls don't feel attraction for guys they don't respect, at least initially. Right? They can't. So, she's just going to stay single, as are the rest of these chicks uh, that I featured tonight. I mean, they're, that it's just ridiculous for you as a woman to still be single four decades later, when you have so much choice, right? These chicks were not even that good looking, right? They were not, you know, they're not, they're about average, I would say, right? But even an average looking chick can, will have just a crazy amount of guys lining up, wanting to be with them, wanting to marry them off, wanting to dedicate their entire lives to them, give them, you know, the princess fantasy, the Disney fantasy, so many guys are willing to do that uh, for these girls who are just even average looking. And this is why I don't feel sorry for them when they are in their middle ages, these chicks in their 40s, and they're complaining about how I'm still single. I'm still single. Well, of course you are, right? Why wouldn't you be? Because look at yourself, right? Look at the, I mean, it's not even the way they look. It's the way they talk. It's their mindset. It's their attitude. It's the potty mouth. Okay? It's the years of therapists. It's the circle jerking. It's uh, the inability to just be giving, nurturing, feminine. As always, share your comments below in my comment section. Anything I might have missed, anything you would like to add, any experiences you've had that you want to share with the tribe, please share them in our comment section below. I always love to see you guys in my comments. I always love to read your comments, so drop those comments below. And until next time, this is M from The 33 Secrets, signing out here from my Range Rover, doing the last series of coaching videos in this car. I'm very sad, but uh, I will be selling it 
uh, very soon. So this is going to be the last round of these coaching videos we're going to do here in my Range Rover. We have a lot of memories in this car. You guys probably learned a ton from me teaching you from this car. And this was the first car that I bought once my uh, channel started to get traction and my business started to get traction. This was the first uh, nice car that I bought myself in a long time. So uh, it's very sad to have to let it go. And this has actually been the most reliable, you guys aren't going to believe this because a lot of you guys are like, Range Rover, oh my God, it must be in the shop all the time. No, this has been the most reliable car I've ever owned. It has never left me on the side of the road. I've never had uh, electrical gremlins or engine problems or anything like that. Uh, it's been maintenance free. And uh, that's the thing about these luxury cars is you have to keep up with the maintenance. As long as you do that, the car will not let you down. So you have a lot of these bonehead owners who will buy these luxury cars, never take them in for maintenance, never do the oil changes, um, and just never take care of them. And then they're, you know, then they, when they break down, they'll get on all these forums and talk about what a terrible car it is. And it's like, no, dude, you just have to maintain it. It's not cheap to maintain it, but you know what? Uh, it won't let you down if you do. So uh, I, I have no problem getting another one, uh, but there are other cars I'm looking at right now so uh, we'll see we'll see but I'm sad to let it go and uh, I'm gonna replace it with uh, something newer because I've had it for a while now so I think it's about that time and I held on to it longer than I should have just because of sentimental reasons but uh, gonna miss this car but as always make sure you smash that like button below go ahead and smash it right now do it for me do it for cash do it for gizmo and do it for the Range Rover. Please smash that like button below. Uh, also hit that notification bell right next to it so that you're notified whenever I release a brand new coaching video here on the YouTube. More importantly, guys, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a ton when you actually subscribe to my channel. So make sure you're subscribed as well because too many of you guys are on my channel, not yet subscribed, but you're watching all these vids. So help a brother out, man. Subscribe, hit the subscribe button. I would very much appreciate it. And uh, for all of you guys who want to support my work and all of this red pill, gold pill, and platinum pill content that I'm teaching you even further, uh, the best way to do that is by jumping into my monthly online coaching program, Seven Months to Mastery, where I am teaching guys just like you how to go out there and approach and close the youngest, hottest, and most beautiful looking women on the planet. I'm talking about eights, nines, and tens. Same exact type of women that myself and all of my coaching students now all around the world are out there approaching and closing every single week. And I kid you not, we are making things happen every single week, no matter how high gas prices go, no matter what boneheads are in the White House, no matter uh, what kind of divisions going on in the world, we're continuing to live our lives at the highest level. And I want you to join us. I want you to become one of us. And again, this is the absolute best way to support my work and you're going to get a ton of value from it, okay? I promise you, you're going to get a ton of value out of my seven months of mastery program. And right now, the first month is only a buck. It's only $1 for the entire first month of coaching lessons. So take advantage of it. It's really easy to get signed up. All you need to do is click that link below in my description box. It will take you over to my website where you can get signed up right now. It just takes two seconds. So do that now, and I will see you in my next coaching video. I'm out from the rover for one of the last times. It may be very sad.